good afternoon or good morning depending on which time you are watching the, uh, this actual lesson. It's Miss Baxter and I am going to talk about um, our lesson four in social studies is using the earth resources. So one of the things we know uh, there are resources that are just they're not they're called natural resources. Those things are like trees and plants and flowers. Those are things that we grow, things that you can find in nature. There are other resources that we make and create. Uh, for example, if you got your plate from home or a fork or a cup, those are all things that are made. There is no seed to make a cup. There is no seed to make a fork. You can't put a fork in the ground and grow a fork tree. So some things are made in nature and some things are created. So we talked a little bit about that in our social studies lesson the other day. We looked at the United States map and we looked at our regions. We have the Northeast region, the Southeast, Midwest, southwest and our western region of the United States. We talked about this area here, all the green, is considered agriculture. Those are where that you can farm. It's really good farming uh, soil and dirt. Then we, industrial area, scattered around, you see little parts of red. Those are where we have uh, plants where we manufacture where there are factories that actually build things for us. Then we have just other uses. And as you can see scattered at the yellow, there are other things that we can do with that land. Now, the second thing that I had you do, I said we look at these symbols. This is the symbol for oil. So where can we find oil? If we look in our map, we can find oil in the lower Midwest region. Here's oil. Oil, 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 oil. Close to the Gulf of Mexico, close to Texas, and a little bit in the Southwest. When we go look for coal, we find coal in this area, Midwest and Southeast region. If you can see that, you can see the coal in those areas. Then we have the iron. You can find iron Look way up here. You see, this is iron. I'm pointing to the, yes, this is iron. You'll see these, these are called the finger lakes right here. And you can find iron around those areas. The next one is gold, which I was really surprised, but not so much. Because in the West, they had something called the gold rush, where people that lived over here took their wagons and horses all the way to the west and searched for gold. So in the western region, you can find gold. And the last was timber. Timber is kind of scattered. If you can see, there's timber in the west coast, a little bit in the south, southern region, quite a bit in the southeast region, but you can also see it scattered through the north and a little bit in the north. East region. Um, these are natural resources. They're found in our ground. Gold is found in the ground. You have to dig for it. Timber, which is uh, another word for trees or lumber, uh, are grown in the ground. Uh, oil, you have to dig or even sometimes in the water, they drill, excuse me, they drill for oil. And then you have um, gold, iron, and coal. All of those things are natural resources because we have they, they grow or they can be found in the earth. We don't grow gold. You have to dig for gold. We don't grow um, oil. You have to dig for oil. We don't grow iron. You have to dig for iron. And same thing with coal. We don't grow it. The trees are the only thing that actually grow out. That's a natural resource. But we have several different kinds of natural resources. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about 
and I'm going to read to you from my book. This is page uh, 24, if you want to follow along. I always say pictures tell a story. And this is uh, partly like a project that you're going to do. Uh, the words that we're going to talk about are renewable resources, non-renewable resources. We're going to talk about what is essential and what we need to conserve. Conserve means to save. We're going to talk about um, erosion and recycling. And then you're going to have a project that you're going to work on after listening to this. Protecting resources. Some resources use people such as trees and soil, are renewed, I'm sorry, some resources people use, not use people, some resources people use, such as trees and soil, are renewable resources. A renewable resource is one that can be replaced in a short time. Many resources found underground are non-renewable resources. Now, we talked about some renewable resources when we talked about the tree. So, we did, oh, here's our tree from yesterday. We talked about this is considered a renewable because we can always plant trees. However, we can still not, we're going to talk about conserving and saving because if we cut down all the trees in the world, we'd be in trouble because remember what we needed trees for? O2 and O2 is the same as air. Trees give us air. Without trees, we would not have enough oxygen in our um, air or in our environment in order to live and to breathe. We also talked about how we get fruits and nuts from trees, that we plant them, that we can play and climb, we use them to build, we use them for paper. Many of you didn't believe me. I told... Uh, I forgot the iron on paper. Um, Lucas asked Google, so he didn't believe me that we use uh, trees to make paper. And then we can also build tree houses. Again, renewable means that there is a seed that we could plant and that we could use, use it for. Okay? Where's my book? So renewable resources are things that we can plant and we can get more of. And then there are some things, when they're gone, they're gone. We can't make more of them. And those are called non-renewable resources. And those take a long time to replace. Um, or sometimes it cannot be replaced at all after it is used. So coal is, I'm going to see if I can pull up some pictures of these things. Coal, oil. Natural gas are non-renewable. If I put gasoline in my car, once I burn it out, I can't use that same gasoline. It is non-renewable. I have to go back and get more. I cannot say, okay, if I drink my water, I can't undrink it. If I put gas in my car, my car uses it, that's gone. I need to get more. So in order to make sure that everyone has enough essential natural resources to live, people have to find ways to save and protect and conserve them. Um, I am reading out of order just so you know, because you may say, Ms. Baxter, that's not what it says. And you are correct. That's not what it says. It says, in order to make sure that everyone has enough essential natural resources to live, people find ways to conserve or save and protect them that would help me that i read it properly one way people conserve resources is by using less of them we call that reduce i was trying to put that up on my board my board isn't working so i apologize um one way we can conserve is to reduce let me write that word down reduce Reduce means using less. 
So one way we can conserve is to reduce. Don't use as much. Many people try to use less natural gas or water. People also conserve resources when they use them more carefully. Some farmers plant trees near their crops or strips of grass in between rows of crops. These plants prevent erosion. What erosion does, let me just draw this picture of you. Picture of you. Picture of erosion. Let's say this is a mountain. And this is water. Erosion happens when water, or even, here's my clouds, air. What happens is, when the water comes, erosion happens, and it starts to knock off pieces of the mountain. The wind can do the same thing. Knock off pieces of the mountain. That can be very dangerous, especially if those pieces are falling in places where people are walking or driving or traveling. So what erosion does is it begins to wear away your mountain. It's almost like when you go to the dentist and you have a cavity, it wears away the, your teeth. So erosion is similar to that. Sometimes we have to put a cap or some type of protective measure to protect your teeth. And that's what a dentist does. So we have to be the dentist for the world to kind of protect our earth. We, we told you we talk, we'll be talking about protecting. Okay, so these plants help to prevent erosion or the washing away of soil by rain, wind, and nearby rivers. The plants help to hold the soil down because we've also talked about natural hazards and we talked about flooding and we know if a flood comes, it'll wipe everything away. Remember we saw the cars floating away, um, parts of buildings floating away. It can also do that to dirt, soil, mountains, hills, any type of landform. So another way to protect nature, oh, sorry, another way to protect natural resources is by recycling them. To recycle means to use them again. Plastic bottles, newspapers, aluminum cans, and glass are all items that people use every day and can recycle them. In many neighborhoods, there is a truck that picks up these items from bins that line our streets. Many factories also recycle materials instead of natural resources to make new products. I'm on page 25. So while many people work hard to protect natural resources, sometimes people's actions can harm them. Chemicals used in factories and on farms can pollute the air in nearby waterways. Smoke from burning fires can also pollute the air. So I am going to um, show you the recycling bin. We know about recycling because we have done it. Here's our recycling bin in our classroom. And we know that we could put paper, towels, or certain things that can go in there. Some things can be recycled, some things can not. Okay, so two more things I wanted to show you. Today I was having lunch. I have my hummus. I have my carrot. Yum. I have my avocado, which I'm using a spoon to eat. Mmm. Delicious. And I have this container of pretzels. I'm going to dip it in my avocado.
And I have my cup and my cappuccino. So when we throw things in the garbage, we create um, landfills. Landfills are places where there are tons and tons and tons of garbage. So one of the things we want to do is try to reduce what we use and what we throw out. And some things we can recycle. So here's a plastic spoon. Eventually, this will th be thrown out and go into a landfill. I can wash it a couple times, use it a couple times, but after a while, it won't be any good. Oh, now my lipstick's on it. That looks better. So eventually, this spoon will be thrown in the trash and find its way in the landfill. I can reuse it, reduce the use of it by um, using it more than once. However, if I brought my own spoon, which I did not do because I forgot, my spoon that I have in my drawer at home, I will not throw that out. Ever. I will keep that forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Maybe somebody will throw it out when I'm no longer around, but this is trash. That one we will save. Here's a cup. There are water bottles. This is not the water bottle. I don't have the smaller ones anymore. So what I do is, so that I do not create a lot of garbage, is when I'm thirsty, I reuse my cup. Fortunately, in Buffalo and in New York State, even this, although it's plastic, can be recycled. I take it to a place, I give it to them, and they pay me a nickel for this. So I am, by using that and recycling it, I am helping the environment because I'm not getting a paper cup or a styrofoam cup. I can bring this every day. My styrofoam cup, I would throw away. I learned this from my mom. This is hummus, it's in plastic. But when this container is empty, when all my lunch is out of it, I am able to put other items in here. Could be food. Maybe I wanna put my paper clips. I can't keep, I can't find my paper clips. Maybe I want to um, put some rubber bands in it. Something that I, something small that I can keep in here and to keep safe. So one of the things that we're gonna um, do today is work on a recycling project. I shared this with you yesterday. This is a paper towel holder. Um, there is actually a picture of what we're gonna do with these. We're gonna use this so it doesn't just go in the trash. And we're going to create some items that um, maybe use as decoration or, can you, oh, you can't see this? Maybe when it's all done, I can put my pencils in it. Or I can put scissors in it. And then I can keep it together. So there is a picture of what you're gonna do with these. But I'm gonna just go over. Um, if you have paint at home, you can paint this. If you have markers at home, which I know you do because I sent that home, you can color your markers. I don't have a picture of what you're going to create, but I want you to be surprised. Um, you have some other items in here. You can use cotton balls. These little balls that I have given you. You can use uh, macaroni. And there are the sequins to decorate your little paper towel holder. So, um, when uh, the teacher shows you the picture of the recycling project, you'll be able to see. Also, you have construction paper at home you'll be able to use to cut out. So make sure you have everything you need 
to create your recycled paper towel um, project. I cannot wait to see what you've done. And even though that I have given you some suggestions, you are always willing to try something different. So I thank you so much for your attention and I look forward to seeing you later. Bye everybody, have a great day.